<laughs> so this I found last December. December 21st or 22nd, I forget which one, of uh, 2019. Uh, my holiday shopping was practically done. I always seem to manage to get it done, oh, I don't know, one or two days before the big day. And I was browsing TJ Maxx, and I just happened to come across this. And what's more, it had a price tag of $5. So even though I knew nothing about this, for obvious reasons, I had to pick it up. I mean, yeah, I mean, what can you use this for? After all, you know what Alton Brown says about unitaskers. Uh, really, they uh, take up space in the kitchen. And really, what can you make with a cast iron pan shaped like this? Well, you could make cornbread for starters. So, you know, very nice, fancy holiday cornbread or uh, cookies. Uh, or the like. I mean, have to admit, this is something of an ornament, but it is still something. Uh, there is no reason why we can't use that. <laughs> and it's because of little things like this, especially this time of year, <laughs> it felt like uh, bringing up the uh, inevitable topic that's coming up, and that is, of course, holiday shopping for cast iron. <laughs> Hi there, everyone. Welcome once again to Cast Iron Wednesday. And as I mentioned, um, this is a really a subject, you know, that everybody has on their minds this time of year. I know this year in particular, the circumstances are often very strange, but, well, not really that much different than they've been for, say, the last few years. Except that, of course, the topic of this particular channel, namely Cast Iron, has been uh, exploding in popularity. And it seems like, uh, especially again over the last few years, we've had so much variety in cast iron cookware that it actually makes it a little uh, easier for us to go and uh, find a uh, present for our, our family and friends this, uh, these holiday seasons. Because, you know, of course, there's always the question of what can I get and what can I afford? And fortunately, this hobby helps uh, bring us something that is answers both of those because a lot of this is affordable. Some of it is really expensive, but a lot of it is affordable. And hey, who in your family would not get a smile if they uh, saw one of these in their stockings? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, hello everyone. <clears throat> and this is a, indeed a QA and a uh, really for uh, cast iron because, you know, this topic of holiday shopping, there's only so much I can cover with it. I won't deny that. And I'm more than happy to uh, really entertain anybody else's uh, questions. And likewise, you as well. Please do comment and please feel free to answer questions as well. This is not a one-way chat. I mean, I want this to be kind of like a two-way thing. And please, uh, f please feel free to take place. For instance, we have Red Dog asking, anyone know what the difference between a number three and number four Lodge ashtray skillets? I didn't know Lodge made a number four or even a number three ashtray skillets. Uh, number three was a specific size, about six inches in diameter or so. And the ashtray skillet, on the other hand, was much smaller than that, maybe about um, three inches or actually not quite that small, maybe four inches uh, in diameter. So, uh, yeah, that's much smaller. In fact, if you don't mind me uh, holding, I'll be very quick, I promise, because clang, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I get for having all those things hanging up. Here is a uh, number three sized uh, Lodge cast iron skillet, which is one you, know, you find it, uh, you can see it, it comes from Cracker Barrel. It's the standard number three size, about six, maybe six and a half inches. And this is the Lodge, actually it's a Wagner, but okay. Uh, this is an ashtray skillet, which is much smaller. So... If you want to know what the difference is, there is the difference. The number three is not exactly an ashtray skillet. It is a very small skillet. This was an ashtray skillet. Lodge did make them, and so did Wagner, so did Griswold, so did BSR. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I mean, if anybody actually manages to come across these and has some, have some of these in their uh, giveaway pile, well, what can you say again? This in itself would make a uh, fine holiday present. <laughs> And uh, 
Boiler Honky Dude, hello again. As he says, uh, after the third Wally World, I finally found the Darth Vader skillets. Oh, you're, uh, you're probably doing better than a lot of people, actually. I mean, I, I certainly expect these things to sell out just because they're Star Wars. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Not that it's because this is a really uh, great cast iron pan. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, of course. It is, in fact, the uh, cheap cast iron pan that they, uh, you know, comes from Asia, and it is really, really small. In fact, if you compare this to a Lodge uh, number three, as you can see, it's actually really you know, even smaller than Lodge. So, <laughs> but this is uh, another one. This, these things here, in fact, are an example of how cast iron has become, again, so popular. Because, as you know, Walmart has been selling those little cast iron cookie skillets every year for about $5. In fact, here's one of them. Uh, last year, in fact, oh, and here I am jumping from topic to topic. The cookie skillet here has been going around for a while, as you know. And these things crop up every year. And people at least cast iron lovers who really love getting these. Last year, they actually started marking the date on them. That, I don't think last year was the first year that they did that. So um, this, of course, is going to uh, frustrate people who uh, try to sell these things at uh, flea markets and antique shops because you always seem to find these things at antique shops these days or even at savers or the like, and they usually call them vintage cast iron pans. Yeah, vintage as in, oh, I don't know, they're not, they're more than a day old, I guess. You know, they've been made in the last few years or so. Yeah, and you see these things all over the place. And if people and people often ask on the cast iron group, cast iron cooking group, where these come from. They are, in fact, the infamous Walmart cookie skillet. Uh, it comes with a batch of cookie mix that is terrible. And uh, namely that, yeah, I've tried making it. Other people have tried making that cookie mix. And really what we advise is that you keep the pan, throw out the cookie mix, and use your own cookie dough. I mean, there's no reason why you can't buy store-bought cook, store cookie dough or make your own cookie dough because it is so easy. And, of course, you can make tiny little sandwiches in that. But then, of course, again, this year, lo and behold, Disney now is cashing in on the uh, cast iron fad. And now we actually have a cast iron Darth Vader and a BB-8 skillet. And, well, just because it's Darth Vader, I'm expecting this thing to, once this thing sells out, I'm betting it will fetch a few dollars anyway, if anybody bothers reselling these things. I'm not going to. It's going it to make a, a nice little uh, souvenir. What can you say? Um, these things also come with a terrible cookie mix. I mean, um, really, when you get uh, the times I tried making the cookie mix with these things came out as almost like more like a sort of chocolate flavored pancake. And it definitely did not seem like a cookie. But that's why instead I had some fun using that uh, using those pans for other things. Cornbread, anyone? Come to the dark side. We have cornbread. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you can actually use those things. And really, there you go. For the, I think those things are $6 instead of $5. But, hey, for $6, I mean, what kid when grown up these days probably wouldn't like seeing, uh, you know, a package under the tree that actually has Darth Vader. So you get to fill up some space under the tree, and there you go. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, uh, Dan's Outdoor Cooking. I bought them just to have them. Well, there is that. <laughs> Strong's Adventures. My dad has found a dozen of those little cookie uh, skillets at the garage sales for about a penny a piece. <laughs> well, for a penny a piece, I mean, why not? I mean, you know, pick up like a dozen or so of them, especially if you've got, I don't know, a restaurant or some other reason to use these things as uh, cheap um cup holders, place holders, anything like that. I mean, there you go. In that case, you can actually uh, get some uh, use out of them in addition to the cooking. <laughs> uh, Clay Gennard, I happened in Wally World and without uh, intention ended up in the cast iron section. <laughs> I bought a number eight Dutch oven, $39 and change. Hey, that's not bad, actually. And yeah, that is one of my uh, little bits in that, you know, if you go to Walmart and end up wandering through the cast iron section, and you do that every time you go to Walmart, 
you might have cast iron <laughs> I know I do. So you're hardly alone. Um, did you ever intend to get a smart pen? Um, I have no idea. Smart, I know, is made in, uh, was made in Canada, and it's a uh, nice vintage cast iron pan. I've seen a couple of them in places like uh, Brimfield and the like. I've never owned one of one myself. Um, do I intend to get one? I personally just may really, I've got enough skillets. What can I say? I can't just keep going and getting more and more skillets. I mean, it's hard enough to justify what I have right now. But on the other hand, if you feel that you really want a uh, smart Canadian made skillet, well, definitely. I mean, it is a fine cast iron pan and it will be a nice heirloom uh, in that it'll last forever, last the rest of your life. And you, you can even pass that on to your uh, kids <clears throat> or grandchildren as it may be. And guess what? Vintage cast iron <clears throat> also makes a great uh, Christmas present. Mm -hmm. That is, if you find a way to acquire it at a decent price. I mean, you may be lucky, like, I, like I've been a couple of times, and end up uh, getting one of these at, say, a uh, flea market. Because there, in this particular case, there was actually an instance where uh, a guy at a flea market was selling two crusty uh, cast iron pans. Um, he had no idea what he had. I asked, how much for the frying pans? And he said, I'll give... I'll, let both of them go for five dollars. They both turned out to be Griswold. So <laughs> I was certainly wasn't complaining about that. That, as they say, is what they call a score. And yes, this would definitely make a uh, nice uh, Christmas present. However, I know it's much more likely these days that uh, you will be uh, probably uh, giving your uh, relatives and uh, friends and family and all that. Uh, brand new cast iron. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially since, well, again, with cast iron becoming so popular, I'm sure there are two possibilities. One is you can get somebody a cast iron pan, their very first cast iron pan, one that, that they've never had before. The other, of, the other problem, of course, is what my friends and family have. I have applied so much cast iron on them over the last few years that they have stated outright to me, no cast iron this year. So no, I cannot give them that as a present. Although on the other hand, I am still gonna cheat at send the Darth Vader pins uh, to uh, my brothers and uh, my godson. So what can you say? It makes a nice stocking stuffer. And besides, there has been so much really uh, produced in the way of brand new cast iron that um, there are many, many wonderful items that are uh, in all kinds of price ranges that would certainly anybody who cooks would uh, very much enjoy. Um, I guess the question then, uh, I guess the question then, of course, is, you know, what to get a person for their very first cast iron pan? And the answer to that is very simple. That is a large 10 inch cast iron skillet. You know, nice and uh, inexpensive. I won't say cheap because, you know, it's, it's really about the best you can get from modern day cast iron. It's like, um, at Walmart, it's fifteen dollars. Uh, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, you can get it for probably thirteen dollars. In some instances, you might even get it cheaper. And really, if you're going to get a person their very first cast iron pan, make it a modern day cast iron pan for the simple reason that if they inevitably abuse it, and well, everybody does that when they're first learning how to cook in cast iron, uh, it would be better that they abuse a cast iron pan that can be replaced. Uh, rather than, say, a rare, uh, you go out of your way, get somebody a rare vintage Griswold, and what in the world are you doing here? Oh, hey, sorry about that. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, you know, rather than get them a rare vintage cast iron pan that um, they could accidentally warp or even drop on the floor and break. And that would not be nice. And say hi to Trouble here. I know he's shown up on on um, on camera before. He started climbing up my leg right now because he wanted some attention. And really, that's not bad at all, considering what this guy went through today. Without going into detail, let's just say he's never going to be having any uh, kittens of his own. I'm sorry to say that, little guy. Yep, we took him... Uh, 
to the vet today and let's just say uh, they did the neutron dance and uh, we don't need to go into any more details about that. He came, he was all scared, of course. He came home, uh, was kind of groggy, but he's really recovered and pretty fast too. He's running around now. Hold on, let me check him one second. Do you want to help me a little guy? You all right? I mean, I realize it's only, it hasn't even, it's only been in several hours, so I don't want him to run around too much. <laughs> but he's doing just fine, and so is his sister, uh, little Miss Mobley. So, all right. Um, as long as the person getting the cast iron pans isn't too lazy to clean it. Yes, that's, that's the eternal question. When they get their cast iron, will they take care of it? Which is yet another reason, of course, to get a brand new cast iron pan first. If somebody's getting, if you're getting someone a uh, brand new cast iron pan, well, again, it's nice and simple to get a, uh, cat, you know, a large cast iron skillet because it's not expensive. And hey, uh, then again, of course, you know, Lodge has been producing a lot of really nice stuff, even brand new stuff. Like, for instance, the uh, 2020 Made in America skillet. <laughs> um, I guess I should say, even though I hope everybody knows, I'm not being paid to promote these things. I mean, um, no, but none of the uh, cast iron manufacturers, including Lodge, has sent me these as a, as a uh, promotional gift. And again, I'm not being paid to plug this. So I hope that put that makes this channel this channel a little different from some of those other ones who are pushing their <clears throat> pampered chef cast iron pants. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, interestingly enough, I'll mention something about Pampered Chef while we're at it. Um, Pampered Chef cast iron pans, they state that they are made in the USA, which has to mean Pampered Chef contracted with Lodge to make their cast iron pans. And well, if they did, bully for them. Hey, that's great. Um, I mean, of course, you know, that really means that you're getting essentially, even though it's square, you're getting a, a nice 10 inch square cast iron skillet for um, $50 in that uh, Pampered Chef sells the 10 inch for $50. They sell a uh, 12 inch for $70, $70. Whereas on the other hand, again, you can get a uh, regular skillet at Walmart for $15. And hey, even, even if it's hard finding the made in America, a skillet. Uh, go to Walmart again, go to their camping section, and they should still have a selection of the Wildlife Series, of their new Wildlife Series pans. So they're also uh, pretty uh, reasonably priced in that case. And yeah, there you go. You've got a nice Christmas present for someone because not only are they getting a nice cast iron pan, it's got a very lovely design of a, um, a wolf, a bear, a deer, and, and all that underneath. So there you go. That's a, a cast iron pan that <clears throat> would <clears throat> certainly be nice under anybody's tree. You know, I remember last year, just out of curiosity, um, it seems like every year I have a reason or another to give somebody a brand new cast iron pan. And last year, around this time, for in fact, at Christmas, for some reason, the Lodge 10-inch skillet specifically was sold out. And I mean sold out everywhere. I went to Walmart, plural. I went to Target, TJ Maxx. I even went to like um, Bass Pro Shops. For some reason, the Lodge 10-inch skillet was all gone. You could still buy other cast iron pans, you know, the Asian-made ones at the same size, but the Lodge ones were all gone. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that because, you know, what, what can we say? It means that Lodge is doing well and they know their audience. <laughs> I certainly think so. Um, okay. Lumpy the Tramp. Uh, I'm baking a chicken using the, using the recipe. Um, first thing you do. Um, okay. I know I, I have, um, if you mean uh, the one I've got on my channel, I know I've done a couple of chickens, all of which I'm proud of, and, and I can only hope they turn out well as, as well. Lumpy the Tramp, what are we cooking tonight? Well, actually, I'm holding off on cooking this time. Uh, the reason being is that uh, I've been doing a lot of cooking on these YouTube lives, and it is a lot of fun, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, I do know that uh, some people do come here mostly for the cast iron as more than the cooking. For me, the cooking is number one. It's really cast iron cooking with an emphasis on cooking, but I'm, you know, I'm just trying to please everyone. Uh, I am not 
not cooking on this YouTube live again. Uh, I'll probably maybe next week. Uh, yeah, in fact, I'm thinking next week will probably be the good time, like, for instance, to do a figgy pudding. But uh, for tonight, again, as I said, it's more like a uh, cast iron talk, assuming I can uh, keep the uh, conversation going long enough here. I hope I didn't give myself too narrow a subject here that everybody starts to get bored. But then again, that's one reason why I like these comments and I encourage everyone like that. <laughs> um, as long as the yeah person isn't too lazy to clean it yeah the first thing you should uh dan's outdoor cooking the first thing you should get everyone is the combo cooker from lodge by far the most versatile oh yeah the uh lodge double dutch oven combo cooker with that skillet lid the deep lid that was the second thing i ever bought in cast iron for myself this again goes back to about January of, of 2011. So we're going on 10 years here. <laughs> uh, I think I mentioned the very first uh, cast iron I bought for myself was in fact a large 14 inch cast iron wok. I still remember I used a gift certificate uh, that I'd received for Christmas for that. And I still have that wok. The second thing I got, because after that, I, this is when I was getting bitten by the cast iron bug and I wanted more cast iron. The second thing I got, I felt would be the uh, most value to me was the Lodge Double Dutch, uh, which is a uh, five quart Dutch oven with that deep skillet lid. And yeah, that was wonderfully uh, useful. I mean, really, you can get so much uh, use out of that. And that's why, again, I can only say that uh, among the first things that I would recommend to anyone if you are just getting into cast iron cooking, first thing you need is, again, a 10-inch cast iron skillet. Second thing you need, maybe a 12-inch cast iron skillet. Third thing you need, a bare cast iron Dutch oven. I've gone over this a couple of times already in that uh, given the choice between getting an enamel Dutch oven and a bare cast iron Dutch oven, I would first recommend a bare cast iron Dutch oven so that you can use it and get a lot of great use out of it. After that, consider an enamel Dutch oven. I think the main reason I say that is because, well, a lot of people have crock pots and uh, you can do anything in a dutch oven you can do with a crock pot yes as well as an enamel uh an enamel dutch oven also makes wonderful things for like uh like uh sauces and the like but nonetheless uh an enamel dutch oven is, is again you'll find it's enormously useful but i would recommend a bare cast iron dutch oven first before going for the enamel also it's a little bit cheaper although it depends on whether or not you can get a, a good deal. John Jasko Sr., I've got 1940 large 7-inch skillet. I have re-seasoned four times and food sticks. Why? I'm betting it's probably not the seasoning. What we find is that with food keeps uh, sticking, it may just be that the temperature is too high. Might want to suggest giving it a try. Turn down the temperature on your... Um, on your uh, oven when you when you fry that's a lesson hard lesson i learned as well i started out at the beginning by blasting my electric stove on high and boy that was a mistake besides the fact that uh i not only a couple of times actually did have minor grease fires yeah they were i was able to bring them all under control but still you really don't want it that hot. And I even managed to warp a couple of my cast iron pans because I was blasting the heat up too high. I've, le I've learned a hard lesson that low and slow is really the best way to cook in cast iron. If you're going to uh, cook on your stove top with a uh, cast iron pan, I would personally, I have very little reason to heat up the stove top uh, burner to more than half. I mean, maybe you maybe at halfway when you are preheating it to the point where you're going to sear some steak or the like. And then if you're going to add something cold, um, like a lot of vegetables or a big piece of meat or the like, you might even want to bump it up to six or seven uh, to uh, really get it nice and blazing hot. And that's about all you need for meat. Meanwhile, more sensitive foods, especially things like eggs and um, and pancakes, you don't need to get that hot. Bring it down to maybe three to four. You know, it's like if you've got a dial or a dial either. Yeah, I think it's this way. If you've got a dial that goes, um, again, if this is half, 
Um, then this is low. We're talking like between low and medium. That's really the area where you want to go for eggs and pancakes and the like. So give that a try and uh, see and see. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, yeah, on gas, in fact. Yeah, I have an electric stove. I've only had the luxury of cooking on gas a few times. I'm betting gas will get it even hotter. So you may only need to uh, cook it about maybe about uh, low or medium or so uh, with, with a gas stove. I have cooked pancakes with a, uh, ga with a uh, gas stove. And yes, you can get them to not stick. So it's probably not the seasoning. I'd say you're doing that right. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I problem with eggs sticking on a gas stove. Yeah, it's, it's gotta be the heat. That's my, uh, that's my best uh, suggestion there. <laughs> uh, do you have the lot, uh, Jan Mills, do you have the large cast iron fish pan? Is it functional? Thanks. Um, yes, I do. I do have that huge, uh, large, uh, fish fryer. Uh, I obtained the newer one that they uh, came out with about, uh, two, a year and a half, two years ago, because I had indeed been looking for the vintage, uh, large fish fryer and could not find it. Uh, and again, I don't go on eBay because eBay is astronomically overpriced. Um, I was hoping to just come across it, but instead I ended up getting that, uh, that, uh, new lodge fish fryer. It works great. <laughs> uh, it's big enough to fit over two burners on the stove. It is huge. It is long. It is wide. It makes a great deep fryer. I've made fried chicken in it several times. It makes a great sheet pan for, for baking. You can cook tons of anything in it. Uh, I, I really, um, it's another reason why um, it's also a good idea, as I think I mentioned already, and I have mentioned already, uh, that if you are really into cast iron cooking or cooking in general, you really do need to get yourself at least one really big cast iron pan, whether it's the Lodge Fish Fryer or the Lodge 15-inch skillet, which is the uh, number 14 size skillet, or even if you come across a vintage number 14 size skillet. Um, if you get one of those, you will find yourself using it a lot, having at least one really big cast iron pan. There are an enormous number of things you can make with those. I mean, it's the world's greatest pizza pan. It's the world's greatest turkey roasting pan. And gee, what holiday did we just have last week? <laughs> and what holiday do we just have coming in about three weeks? So yeah, a nice large cast iron roasting pan, which would be a the uh, number 12 or number 14 size cast iron skillet. Um, so, and yes, the, uh, Lodge fish fryer also, uh, falls into that. So I, I definitely would recommend there are very few cast iron pans. I will not recommend. I mean, if people say to me, you know, uh, do you recommend getting? Yes, but I didn't even say what it is. Yes. Get it. <laughs> Whether it's the, um, you know, like for instance, whether it's a uh, stargazer cast iron skillet or whether it's the, uh, lodge, um, or whether we've got brand new, um, let me move this thing out of the way. Um, this is a, uh, vintage, by the way, BSR six wedge cornbread, uh, skillet, or even the, the new lodge baking pans that came out this year, like this pie pan. Um, you, if you have a use for it, you really have a use for it in cast iron. What can I say? So, I mean, whether, um, Really, um, pretty much, it really depends, I guess. Well, number one would probably be on your budget. I mean, as we've said already, cheap cast iron is still wonderful for cooking. And there is no shame in, uh, in only, and I'm using the word only in quotes, having like, say, a nice lodge cast iron skillet or even a uh, cast iron pan from uh, Family Dollar or Walmart Ozark Trail um, or even these Walmart cookie skillets. Um, there is no shame at all with it, with that. I mean, it's all great. It's all great for cooking. You will get a lot of use from it. So <laughs> did I miss out on the reveal on that holiday cake? Um, trying to think which, ho oh, you mean the, uh, fruit cake from, uh, from Sunday? Well, on that, uh, video on Sunday, um, the cake had to bake for an hour and a half, so I could not <laughs> stay live that whole time. But 
on that YouTube live there, if you look at the comments, I pinned a link. It's on my it's on my Facebook page, Cast Iron Chaos, the reveal of that uh, Facebook of that uh, fruitcake. And yeah, that fruitcake came out pretty darn good. I'm wondering if my roommate Jamie can hear me. We ate the whole thing in two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that fruitcake turned out pretty darn good, and Jamie smashed it, and I smashed it. So I said, and I smashed it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fair is fair. I will take my share of the blame. I'm the one who made it. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was a uh, good... Um, that was a good stream, and well, yeah, I liked how that one turned out. I mean, there were no real flaws in that in that making of that fruitcake, and I'm glad about that. <laughs> I know <laughs> that fiasco a couple of weeks ago when I made that pumpkin pie. I do not want to repeat a fiasco like that. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around after that. But uh, anyway, yeah, that fruitcake as well was fun, and that was only one of a lot of great holiday baking and cooking you can get <laughs> in cast iron. I mean, as I already showed you, you've got, you know, that uh, this, um, once again, this lovely snowflake pan that, again, I found for $5 at TJ Maxx. And again, I have no idea who the manufacturer was. However, really, um, this has to mean then that means, yes, it's Asian made because quite simply... Lodge is the only major cast iron manufacturer in the USA. Therefore, if it's not from Lodge, it's Asian made. What about Field? What about uh, Stargazer, Finex, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? They do have. Um, I I really enjoy the the uh, those small uh, those uh, brand new cast iron pans, and I'd really do recommend them for people. Who can afford it? I mean, that's the thing, of course. They've got to sell those things at high prices. Um, and yes, uh, they are really filling a great niche. And it is really great to see a whole bunch of new made in America stuff, like the uh, like the Stargazer, for one. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I'm holding it the right way. <laughs> Of course, the thing is, is that because they're small companies, they do not have the capability, unfortunately, to produce thousands and thousands of pans and ship them to big box stores all over the country. That's a sad fact of today. That's simply unfortunate how this how business goes here in the 21st century, which is why they have to go for a niche market and why they have to make their pans good enough to compete with things like Le Creuset and uh, and the and those uh, really really fancy thousand dollar waterless. Uh, stainless steel uh, collections and so forth. So because they have to make a profit as quickly as they can. That's the sad fact about doing business today. And I very much encourage supporting them if we can afford it. I mean, there's the thing. Uh, that, of course, is the question of why should I pay $100 for a Stargazer or $200 for a Finex when I can get a lot for $15 at Walmart? And that is, of course, <laughs> uh, a moral debate that's probably going to keep going on again and again and again. And I'm not going to try to answer that one tonight either because there is a slight difference between these, these really fancy Stargazer and Finex and Field Skillets. The difference between a Lodge and, say, the Stargazer, if Lodge is excellent, and it is, Stargazer is outstanding, meaning, you know, maybe a wee bit better in some manner, manner or another than Lodge. So, I mean, if you want the difference between excellent and outstanding, then you go, of course, for the really fancy stuff. On the other hand, if you're, if you are like a lot of people and you just like some really good family cooking with an excellent pan, hey, you've got Lodge, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. In fact, there's even nothing at all wrong with the other brands, you know, Camp Chef, Cabela's. Um, you notice as well, um, one thing that hasn't been mentioned much, a lot of these little um, uh, marketing, I don't know if they're marketing companies or cookware companies, are all coming out with their own brands of cast iron pans. And, you know, we're talking about, like, say, 
Utopia Kitchen and a whole bunch of uh, new companies, all of which with names that I don't even remember. But if you look on Amazon, for instance, under Cast Iron Cookware, you will see more and more of these companies showing up all the time. They're all got these really nice looking cast iron skillets uh, in a reasonable, pr affordable price, you know, like maybe a 25 to 30 to $40 price. And, you know, the funny thing about that, about those skillets, a lot of them look exactly like Lodge. <laughs> it's as though Lodge must be doing something right because they've got all of these imitators now. And yes, they are all Asian made and imported. So if you have moral quandaries about that, well, you don't have to get them. If you want something nice and affordable, well, and, and I guess you can get them. So again, welcome to the 21st century. <laughs> all right. Uh, Jan Mills, thanks so much. I am on the waiting list for the fish pan. Well, the best of luck. All I could say is that when you get it, you will definitely enjoy it. You could make yourself the world's biggest lasagna in that. There's a hint. <laughs> Danny Gaspard, many recipes called a heat until smoking or heat for 10 minutes. Doesn't high heat destroy the seasoning? Uh, high heat can affect the seasoning. Uh, I think it's more like high heat for a while. Um, you know, in that also, you know, the cooking, of course, is adding more seasoning to the pan. So that actually helps uh, in that respect. You know, it's like if you blast your uh, cast iron pan at the stovetop at ridiculously high heat, hot enough so that you can set your stove on fire. You know me. I, I that was my very first video. Remember, it's several years ago when I set my stove on fire. That, yeah, that will destroy your seasoning and possibly your pan as well. Um, likewise, if you if you set a cast iron pan on your stovetop, even at say six or seven, and leave it there for oh I don't know. If you walk away and forget about it and then come back to it half an hour later, you may very well find that on the bottom there is a, uh, it's no longer black, but it's actual, a lot of the seasoning has been burned off and it may look whitish or even steel gray. Well, in the short run, you can just simply uh, rub on uh, shortening or vegetable oil and keep on cooking. That should actually work fine. In the long run, you probably would want to just season it again. But uh, doing things like that, well, it will not really affect your cast iron, at least. That's the nice thing, is that even if you burn off the seasoning, unless you've done something really extreme, then all you need to do at the worst is season the pan again. <laughs> so... I hope that answers it. <laughs> and Gingy Smith, my kind of live chat. Well, I'm glad you like it. Uh, Bookworm73, I'll wait for the fancy pans to show up at the flea market. Well, it might happen uh, on the Cast Iron Cooking Group. Well, granted, you know, because we've got 300-something thousand people on there. You, I mean, a lot of things happen on there. Some people actually have found a Finex skillet at the flea market, believe it or not. Um, so who knows what could happen? Uh, you might indeed get lucky. Um, and yeah, that may also be, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. My throat's a little dry now. <laughs> um, you might get lucky because yeah, you never know what you're going to find at a flea market. That of course is <laughs> the thrill of the hunt. Um, I mean, a lot of my, uh, best scores I have made at flea markets. I mean, I think I mentioned that my huge, the old Le Creuset enamel cast iron Dutch oven that I was using for several years, that huge monster, I found that at a flea market for six bucks. It was in beat up condition and it did not have a lid, but six bucks for a Le Creuset, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it, the enamel finally worn out this year and that's why I had to invest in a stove to replace it, so. <laughs> um, same here, bookie book. 73. Um, thanks so much. Um, okay, so we've got the reveal cults. Um, cults. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, here for the tacos. Cults. <laughs> well, in some ways, you, you know, we kind of call this the cult of cast iron because it is hard. Sometimes it can be hard to justify why we've got this crazy madness here for getting all of these 
uh, all of these cast iron pans. And sometimes, who knows, in a way, it may almost seem like a cult mentality <laughs> for good and for bad. I mean, for the record, I'll just say, especially recently, for some reason, you know, people are still um, flaming me and calling me an idiot on YouTube. And well, you know, that happens to everybody on YouTube. I mean, I can deal with it. <laughs> but people are calling me an idiot because about a year or so ago, I actually turned down an offer for a free field skillet. Yes, I did. And I still don't regret it. Um, but ever, ever since I mentioned that, that's all I get. How dare you turn down a field skillet? You are an idiot. Yes. I mean, just today, someone basically called me an idiot for for turning down a field as opposed to oh as opposed to getting the inferior lodge blacklock how come you turned down a free field and bought lot and bought a lodge blacklock obviously you're in the pocket of the big corporations and you don't you don't support the independents <clears throat> if i go a little more i might spit on the mic <laughs> but yeah that's it happens to everybody, of course. But yeah, I have gotten some of that. And what I told him is the truth. I Did I refuse that field skillet because I honestly had no need for it? I've got more than enough skillets. What can I say? I mean, I mean, the skill, I mean, yeah, the field skillet is probably the equivalent of the modern day Griswold. Great. I've got a Griswold. I've got a couple of Griswolds, so <laughs> it's a, I'm sure the field, no, I know the field is a fantastic pan. So is a Griswold. So is my Lodge Blacklock, for that matter. As I told him, I got the Blacklock here. Uh, let me move that, and let's do a nice thing of this. This is the Lodge 10-inch Blacklock skillet, which is very beautiful, very light, actually. It's maybe about two ounces lighter than a uh, heavier than a vintage Griswold. So this is a pretty decent pan here. Anyway, I got this because I had a need for it. It is shaped like a chef's skillet, and I wanted to get it and use it as a chef's skillet. And I've been using it for about the past year or so, and it is a great cast iron chef's skillet. So I certainly don't regret uh, getting it. I mean, yes, a free field would be nice as opposed to my five or six other <laughs> 10 inch cast iron skillets. Yes, but the, uh, the field has a glass smooth cooking surface. So does the Griswold. So does the BSR. <laughs> so, and if you own a field skillet, Great. Please. No, please show, please show it off. I will say, yes, the field is a really very nice looking skillet and it is light. It is glass smooth. They are really going the long way to try to uh, be the modern day Griswold, probably even more than the other cast iron manufacturers. Uh, field is trying to be the modern day Griswold. In fact, if you catch the Culinary Fanatics YouTube channel, you know, he's a friend of mine. Today, he finally posted his first video in some time. He did an unboxing of a field Dutch oven. They sent him a Dutch oven. And if you go to his channel, you will see him unboxing it. And what it looks like is the lid looks like a Griswold lid. But the, but the Dutch oven itself looks like a lodge. They actually base their design on a Lodge Dutch oven, which again seems to suggest that Lodge is doing something right. <laughs> uh, and here we are, J, J Dive 4. I think you should have taken the field skillet and done at least a few videos and then maybe raffled it off or given it away to a viewer or held some kind of a contest. Yeah, that's come up a few times. I personally have not had much luck doing those kind of uh, giveaways in the early days of the cast iron cooking group i mean i know right now we're at like 373,000 subscribers we're talking about the early days when we were actually managed to hit 1000 viewers for the first time for a brief time i was actually hunting down vintage cast iron skillets and giving them away to uh member number 1000 and member number 2,000, and member number 3,000, and member number 4,000. In each instance, they all said, hi, yes, thank you very much for the pan. And then I never heard from them again. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a nice milestone for the group, and I didn't mind doing it. But 
it would have been nice, I think, to have actually seen the people using those pans after, uh, you know, after uh, they uh, were lucky enough to uh, get them from the group. So then there was the time when for 10,000 members on the Cast Iron Cooking Group, I tried to do a video contest, specifically a video contest, not a photo contest. What I said is make any kind of a video, even a cheap video, just film it with your phone or something. And the winner, which will be judged by the group, will uh, get, uh, what did I get? Um, oh, yeah, I think it was, in fact, a... <laughs> Dutch oven, no less, if I remember right. Boy, it's so long ago, I barely remember it. <laughs> I mean, but anyway, <clears throat> well, uh, people posted their videos to the group at that time, and the winner of the, of the contest was one of the admins of the group. And there was no bias. There was no cheating involved because, you know, it was the people on the group who voted for the best video. Uh, and it just happened to be one of the ones who was one of the admins on the group. Well, one of the guys there who had also entered into, the, uh, con into that contest, he flipped out. He accused me of cheating. He went uh, berserk. And even on his uh, YouTube channel, if you look today, and I'm not going to mention the name of the channel, sorry, but uh, the, today he still has this video essentially accusing me you know it's like you know the cast iron cooking group was a was a great place to be except that its moderator is a is a pagan satanist <laughs> so yeah somebody was a sore loser um for the record just i mean i don't bring up religion i will say a couple of things no i am not a satanist this is not a satanic symbol. This is what they call the star of chaos. And if you look up Warhammer 40K or Michael Moorcock, you will know what the star of chaos is. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to go into about that. Hi, Raymond, 305 in the house, unmarked number three hammered skillet, one dimple under the handle. Can anybody identify it? Hmm, Three oh. what is 305? I'm not sure what 305 means. Unmarked number three hammered skillet, one dimple under the handle. Um, you know, for an unmarked number three, uh, let me uh, take a wild guess. Excuse me one second, folks, or about five seconds. Clang, clang, clang. Number three hammered skillet. It has a number three on the handle, and it has a hammered design like this, and it is blank underneath. Would it look anything like this, I wonder? If it is, what you've got yourself is an ugly hammered skillet, which is great, which is a really nice vintage skillet. The ugly hammered ones, as you know, they're, um, collectors only call these things ugly, because they don't know, we don't know who made it. And we're not saying ugly because in any kind of an insult. This is a really nice pan for the record. It's very, very thick and heavy. It has a wonderful, smooth uh, cooking surface on the inside. Uh, it, they're called ugly because, yeah, you have to admit, the, uh, hammered pan, the hammered pattern is very nice but it does look very crude. It honestly looks like somebody beat the ham, beat the pan with a ball peen hammer. Seriously. <laughs> they also have a Dutch oven uh, with the same hammer design and the design and the underneath the lid is also has a very crude design. So that's why they call those ugly hammered pans. They're wonderful to own though. And anybody who is lucky enough to have an ugly hammered pan Use it with pride because there is no shame with it. You've got yourself a great vintage pan. It's just one of those unknown UFOs. So I'm hoping that helps uh, rain there. Uh, Chicago Hardware Foundry, they were different in a couple of ways. They had a much fancier hammer design than this. The hammered pattern on the side was much more elaborate and much easier to see. They also did have a marking on the bottom. Uh, rather than, you know, how BSR had like a number and a letter in in. Um, in Chicago Hardware Foundry's case, I believe it was 
two numbers and then a letter. So it would be like 99 C or I actually, I'm, I apologize. I don't have this one memorized. However, if you look for Chicago Hardware Foundry, you will see some details about that. Uh, yes, demo Ozark, uh, demo Ozark. They're usually heavy and they cook great. <laughs> um, Millie, Mike Hall, what's your most prized cast iron? Well, the easy way to say would be all of them. <laughs> well, I have uses for all of them. But in terms of prized, well... I think that's probably the one that I took out for Halloween. And, you know, that would be that 15-gallon cast iron cauldron from the 1800s. That was a wonderful score that I managed to afford at Brimfield. And it's you know, definitely a prized possession. And, again, if you look at that jambalaya video I did about um, – um, that jambalaya video I did uh, for Halloween, you will, uh, you will see that one in action. <laughs> Uh, yes, some people are always easy to, yes, off. Maybe take the free skillets and, and make content, but then auction sell and then donate to charity. Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll consider it. I'm not really much of a salesman. I'm, I've had, I don't know. It's, I really not had much of an incentive to go really that route. I've sold a few pans, uh, on, uh, the, uh, Iron Man Cooking, Iron Man Auction Group, which is a great group. Oh, let me plug that, by the way. Hey, remember, this was supposed to be about holidays, <laughs> about holiday shopping. <laughs> I hope nobody minds that it's kind of wandered. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, if actually, that's a great place to go. If you want to get vintage cast iron as a holiday present, because they can usually ship it to you. We've got three weeks until Christmas. You, could, you should usually be able to get it within a week or two. Go to the Facebook group, Iron Man Cast Iron Auctions. It is a wonderful group because the people there know their stuff. It is done by real, honest cast iron collectors. And, uh, and all of the group makes an effort to keep the group honest and fair. So on one hand, uh, you will see a lot of really, really great cast iron on there. It will not be as astronomically priced as eBay, although the better although because they know their stuff, the good stuff will probably be kind of expensive. <laughs> if you want a Griswold on Iron Man auctions, you could end up paying anywhere from 50 to 150 dollars. 50 dollars for a vintage Griswold probably wouldn't be bad. And there you go. If you want to get vintage cast iron as a present, then uh, you could you could certainly do so. Which uh, Miss French Twist? I have a three leg covered camp pot marked B O on the bottoms. Any thoughts? Well, B O. I'm hoping it's using deodorant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now that you've uh, all wandered away, I apologize for that. Anyway. Um, it's a three-legged covered camp pot. Um, B.O. My guess would be uh, there are a number of unknown uh, skillets and Dutch ovens from the late 1800s that seem to have those two letters on the bottom, and they do seem to vary. B.O., O.K., um, J.R., they seem to be at random. The rumor has it that some of those may actually be Blacklock from the Lodge Foundry. However, nobody can confirm that. So I cannot say that they are, they are Blacklock. Nobody can confirm it because Blacklock Foundry burned down and their records have been lost. So there is no way to absolutely confirm what's Blacklock and what isn't. Even if it's not, it's a really nice unknown 19th century Dutch oven. And 19th century Dutch ovens are actually pretty rare. Uh, the spiders are more rare than the Dutch ovens, it seems like. So, I mean, right there. Uh, so while I really can't identify it, I would say at least you've got yourself a nice, uh, a nice uh, piece there. And I really hope you're using it. Gate marked as well. Uh, DO for Dutch oven. Um, oh yeah, Dio. Well, remember it was, it's only been Lodge that has given those uh, initials to its pans and they only started doing that around the 1950s and later. So if that is gate mark, it's definitely not Lodge. 
Uh, Danny Gaspard, large surfaces are very rough. Do you have an issue with people sanding them smooth before seasoning? And is sanding really necessary? Second question first. Is sanding really necessary? No. Let me say that again. No, it is not necessary to sand a lodge or any cast iron pan. I cook just fine on my lodge and uh, even on the Asian pans, uh, even though they've got a somewhat rougher surface, yes. Uh, and it's also true that the glass smooth surface of Stargazer or Vintage or the like does seem to be a little bit better. And here again, I say a little bit better. I cook great on lodge. I do not shy away from using my lodge for pancakes, for uh, eggs, um, especially for things like steaks and the like. Um, if I'm going to sear a steak, I would go to my modern day Finex, which does have a glass smooth surface, but it's also extremely heavy and thick. And that's the best thing I find for searing a steak. Um, so no, you... Um, and also, it's been proven many times, um, you will not have to uh, sand, a, uh, sand a cast iron pan to a glass smooth surface just to get it non-stick. It will work just fine with a rougher surface. People, I, I honestly think the whole bit about the uh, glass smooth surface is number one, because of course, vintage cast iron for decades always had uh, nice smooth surfaces. And yes, it does look nice. It looks really beautiful. A uh, glass smooth surface on a cast iron pan. Again, this looks really nice. And that, I think, is a lot of the appeal of the, uh, even the, the original cast iron pans. They smoothed, they sanded them so smooth, especially so that they would look nice. And of course, yes, they do cook nice as well. Um, but I don't feel it is. I don't feel it's absolutely necessary. I have again this uh, Lodge um, twenty twenty made in America skillet. I am not going to grind this thing down. I'm leaving it in the condition that I got it because it works fine, and I think it's really nice. I hope that helps. <laughs> Have you heard of Stargazer offering a refinished surface for the old original Stargazers from the beginning? No, I had not heard that. I am not really privy to a lot of information about Stargazer. And if they're doing that, well, um, my guess would be that people probably complained and they are doing this really for customer service because it makes for good PR. I mean, I would think, as I said, from the beginning, I would not think that any surface of a cast iron pan, especially like a Stargazer, would be any kind of a problem. And I'm going to have to refill the cat's water. Um, yeah, would not be any kind of a problem. But because a lot of people, especially for these new makers, are demanding that they have the, you know, the absolute best glass smooth surface in the world. After all, I paid $90 for this pan, so I better get the best I can get which is a reasonable thing to ask. Um, they may very well have made the decision that it would be nice PR, you know, public relations, to uh, get the older uh, stargazers back and resand them down. That is a guess. I do not have any privy to that. <laughs> All right. Boiler Hunky Dude is uh, heading out and, wow, I have managed somehow to get this thing going for an hour. <laughs> and yet, you know... Well, I mean, as I said, the original topic of this was, in fact, holiday shopping, and I hope it's helped. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? There is a lot of stuff available now, which is what I was saying in the first place, for uh, really for uh, Christmas this year. And really, getting somebody a cast iron pan, that's one of those presents that almost anyone will enjoy. And it's not really expensive. It's likely going to last forever as long as they take care of it. And for that reason, I mean, you really can't go wrong. You've got a uh, son or daughter or cousin or someone who is a, a starving college student. Get them a cast iron pan. They can, they can believe me, that will help stretch their food budget because they can actually cook some nice stuff with that. <laughs> uh, it makes a great wedding present. And like I said, it makes a great stocking stuffer. Whether you're talking like these little dinky Star Wars pans or something really, really nice. 
Oh, I, I even, I've even been standing in front of this. Oh, yeah, here's a nice piece of cast iron. Get this. And I know this will be very familiar to most folks. Oh, boy, is this heavy. I managed to find this for 20 bucks at a flea market. So, yeah, you better believe I wasn't about to pass this up, especially since I have cats. <laughs> this thing is so heavy that you can bet that since the cats are going to climb the Christmas tree, having this as a, as a base is really going to be a good idea. <laughs> Excuse me. Ugh. Phew. <clears throat> hmm. Some people don't appreciate them. Well, no one, you can't please everyone. That's a sad fact. <laughs> but we do what we can. And anyway, and for those of us who are, who've been bitten by the cast iron bug, well, what can we say? It's a fun hobby. <laughs> All right. Nonetheless, though, uh, what is your thoughts of using evapo rust on cast iron pans? Um, I've not had much luck with it. Some people have, and I'm not sure if evapo rust um, is food safe. I would really need to ask if that's the case. I do not know. And someone would need to answer that question of whether or not uh, it's safe to use evapo rust on a fruit cast iron pan for that reason. If it is, go for it. Um, I've used evapo rust no problem. I use paper towels to wick around the rusted areas to save on fluid volume use. Okay, well, that answers that. Okay, I mean, if you if it works for you, use it. I mean, as, again, as long as it's safe, I guess that's the uh, real question. <laughs> so, oi. Um, boy, I'm actually, like I said, <laughs> um, oh yeah, originals were too smooth and not holding seasoning very well. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Well, you know what? As a matter of fact, I'm actually wondering if that may be the case with my own um, <laughs> Stargazer. You know, I've had this thing now for almost a year, and yes, I have had some trouble keeping the seasoning on, but I'm going to keep on using it. So uh, there's no need for uh, them to re to refinish uh, my Stargazer. I am I still like using it. I mean, heck, yeah, I mean, about a month ago, I made a cheesecake in this thing, and so I have no complaints. <laughs> um, nonetheless, though, I can't believe we have actually gone on for an hour. And well, despite the fact that, as I said, we okay, yes, what's up? As a novice to cast iron, um, if you're getting a gift for someone who is not really familiar with cast iron and is new to it, and um, the black lock skillet. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. Lodge Black Lock, mm -hmm. because it's similar to like a, a skillet that you know your traditional skillet that you get like Teflon or whatever. Yeah, and uh, it's like a good bridge to like learn how to cook with cast iron. Yeah, because that's how I learned. That's I. Oh yeah, you've you've had access to my collection. You use the heavy pans and the lighter pans, and you yourself you seem to prefer the lighter pans. Yeah, well, it's not the, not so much the weight. It's like how they cook. Mm -hmm. Um, I just had an easier time with I don't know. If it's Probably maybe because it's thinner. It yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, we've compared the Stargazer to the Black Lock. And I know in your case, you actually prefer the Black Lock. Yeah. I didn't like the, the well, it's not that I didn't like the yeah. Stargazer. I just had a hard time cooking on it. Be um, honest. Everybody also, has their opinions. Yeah. I also cook. I'm a, I, I've am i always like short order cooked, you know, so I cook mm -hmm. at a higher temperature, not too high. But with the Stargazer, I think you really have to cook on like a lower temperature because otherwise it sticks really hard. Oh, it's what we make. We made, I um, think it's because it's thicker. Yeah. Well, no. It, well, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, but we made Rubens. That's what we made. Yes, and, like, we did. Corned beef and the sauerkraut like mm -hmm. stuck instantly. Well, yes. So I guess uh, lubrication is the key. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grease that, grease that up, and yeah. lower temperatures. But I had, I, you know, I've used the black one mm -hmm. tons of times. It's my mm -hmm. favorite. But so. Like it was a Christmas gift for somebody. Like for if you're introducing someone to cast iron, the. Black Lock skillet would be my suggestion for that. Yeah, it, it's it is kind of pricey, but I mean, if you if that's what you prefer, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really get really get what you like. Yeah. So I mean, I'm not suggesting they like, get it for someone at the office, you mm -hmm. know I mean? but you know, if you yeah, have something you care about, you know, <laughs> which do you like better, Black Lock or or Stargazer? That's just it. Um, uh, they're probably asking me, and I really cannot give any kind of a preference to that. As I said, probably because I'm biased because they're all in my collection. And if I don't like it, yeah, quite frankly, I'll get rid of it. I mean, I have uh, given away a number of pans over, over the years. I like the Black Lock. 
I like the Stargazer. Um, they both have a lot of great uses. So if I want to cook something in a nice smooth pan, I can go for the black lock. If I want to cook, say, breakfast, I think for a breakfast pan, this, again, because this is a really a good chef skillet, I would definitely uh, give a heads up to the black lock. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that helps, though. Um, as I said, I've been kind of rambling here tonight. I mean, I'm trying to go into the uh, topic of uh, holiday shopping and more than anything else, I'm hoping at least I've been able to, you know, this conversation has been able to offer at least a few hints on the question, of course, what can I get someone for Christmas <laughs> for cast iron? And there's the answer. You know, if they're starting out, you can get them anything. You could get them a large cast iron skillet. You could get them something fancy like the Black Lock. Uh, Peter Grupp, is there such a thing as bad seasoning? If the seasoning gets lumpy, is that a good reason to take it off and start over? Um, I'd say the only real bad seasoning is if it doesn't stick. Um, you know, in that if you find it's flaking off and you're getting the uh, and you're getting that black residue every time you wash. I mean, it can ha it happens frequently. It happens to all of us. But every time that maybe the seasoning wasn't done quite right, um, that would probably be. As it is, if the seasoning gets lumpy, then it really becomes a personal choice. I mean, if you feel that it's going to interfere with your cooking, then it's time to strip it and uh, re-season it over. If you like what you're doing with it, hey, you know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Hi, right, and a very enjoyable hour of ramblings it has been. Well, well, I'm glad I liked it. So, but anyway, I guess really that's a nice generic answer. As I said, when it comes to, I mean, we've got three weeks yet to go for Christmas. There's still plenty of time, at least in some instances, to order something from Amazon, maybe even to go on to say Iron Man cast iron auctions, which I am not an admin on. So that plug there again is a free plug for them. Um, or even to go and uh, look into uh, something uh, nice and fancy, or even just to go to Walmart or TJ Maxx or the like and uh, get a nice large cast iron skillet there. All of which they are all great. And hey, again, I stumbled across this thing at TJ Maxx. Who knows what you'll find when you're browsing there. So you might find something really nice. <laughs> Heck, this, in fact, I happened to find on my birthday. Hmm. Yeah. This is the um, Smith Clark Ironworks uh, USA cast iron skillet. And this was $10 at TJ Maxx. So, yeah. Yeah. You, again, you better believe I had to grab this. So, yes, it's Asian made, which is why, again, that's. That's an entirely different story, but still, there it is. You never know what you'll find, and something like that, again, would make a great stocking stuffer. <laughs> My suggestion is you give them a skillet, but you also give them your time and guidance so they don't get frustrated and, and give up right away. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. Absolutely, yes. Make your, make your services available. And while you're at it, Maybe a cooking kit to go with it. Not just a skillet, but like, say, oh, some scotch Bright scrubbies to wash it, some uh, Crisco to uh, help grease it up. You know, the stuff that, and maybe even a pot holder, you know, the stuff that you really do need. Oh, and maybe even a metal spatula and a wooden spatula to go with that. <laughs> so, all right, and some, yes, and some better cookie mix than the stuff that comes with the, uh, <laughs> with the uh, Darth Vader skillet. Oi. Yes. Oh, yeah. I did mention that at the beginning, actually, that I'm really, yeah, it's so far in that I don't have any sponsors uh, on my channel. So uh, pretty much I'm doing all this. You know, it's like if I'm plugging someone, it's because I like them and I'm glad to give them a plug, which is one reason why I've mentioned Lodge so much. Um, what recipes should they try first? Well, that's easy. You know, you go with the uh, cast iron stuff, which is what we see all the time. Cornbread, steak, bacon, <laughs> home fries, <laughs> you know, go with it. Go with the nice, easy stuff, biscuits and gravy, because there's nothing wrong with that. It's great stuff. We make it every day. And there's a reason why we make it every day. <laughs> it's delicious. 
All right. Yeah, I had the cookie mix. Yuck. A crock for their bacon grease. Yeah, there you go. Nice and simple. Oh, yeah. If you get a bacon grease crock, make sure it's metal. I have actually seen instances where people have tried pouring hot bacon grease into a plastic container. <clears throat> All right. And I'm cooking in my cast iron Dutch oven. Happens to be a Chinese lodge. Yes, that's true, because the enamel Dutch ovens are made in China, which is a subject for another time. And actually, at this point, I mean, again, we're getting on this long. Um, that may be a subject to go into at another time, but not yet, because, well, Christmas is approaching, and I've got this urge so that hopefully, say, next uh, next Wednesday, I'm thinking we're probably going to do another classic holiday dish. And in my case, I'm thinking I'm one of my favorites that I've been doing for the last several years, and that would be figgy pudding. Actually, not just the Christmas plum pudding, which is also wonderful, but in my case, specifically a figgy pudding. So that's going to come next week. And having said that, especially since my throat is uh, getting dry here, <laughs> I'm thinking uh, we're all about we're all about set this time. As always, though, I mean, what can I say? I can only thank everybody for watching here. I'm really, it's, it very, it's a lot of fun being able to talk with you. No, not at you, but with you. I mean, I really like the interaction here. It, it really, it, as I said, this whole channel is a lot of fun, and that's the biggest reason to do it. So, and that's all because uh, everybody here uh, seems to like it, and I can only thank you very much for that. So, thank you once again, everybody. Enjoy a nice cast iron Wednesday, and uh, once again, we will see you all next week. Have a good evening.